we are here to debate about closure of light Vedanta at QT Korean. So Vedanta Limited is a company industry which which was a light copper plant in Tamil Nadu, particularly at uh, Tutukuri, which was given the name later as QT Korean. It was closed in May 2018 by TNPBC, Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board. Uh, protest was protest alleging environmental violations and uh, it lasted for over 100 days and the result was the 13, 13 anti-sterlite protesters were dead, killed, shot by in police firing and over 100 were critically injured. So this was about the incident that took place in 2018 and a week after the company was shut down. So let's ask Shravani, our environmentalist, who will give point, her views on the environmental allegations. Hello everyone, my name is Shravani. I'm playing the role of environmentalist and I will talk with Deepa. In 2008, the Department of Community Medicine, Brunel Medical College, submitted a report covering a population of 80,725 people and compared the health status in villages. They found that the iron content in the groundwater in Tutikori, the area where the ongoing protests were held, were 17 to 20 times higher than the permissible levels prescribed by the Bureau of Indian Standards for drinking water. Chronic exposure to iron through drinking water could result in chronic fatigue, joint pain, and abdominal pain. At 13.9%, respiratory diseases were significantly more prevalent in the areas surrounding the factory than in areas without industry, and this was much higher compared to the state average. The incidence of asthmatic bronchitis is 2.8% more than double the state average of 1.29%. The study also found that there were more people suffering from ENT disorders near the factory. Among the ENT diseases, pharyngitis and sinusitis were very high. Climatic, climatic conditions and atmospheric pollution could be the cause of the prevalence of ENT mobility. The report concluded. General body pain was another widely reported symptom in the area area closer to the factory. This is the proof of the environmental regulation violations done by Vedanta. The residents of Tutikori have been suffering this problem since 1994 while the third life plant has been ignoring the environmental regulations. Hence the protests were justified. Still Vedanta is denying their violations towards environmental regulation. Hello everyone, I am Mitu. I am the industrialist. I would like to deny the allegations. So I would like to say that most of the allegations were made were not true and I would like to add that Chinese companies funded the anti sterilite protest so that they wanted to capture the copper market of India and they promoted and funded the allegations because we have been working for a long time uh, we give a, we supply almost 40% of uh, copper supply in India and uh, our plant contributes 95% of the Tamil Nadu sulfuric acids requirement. And because of the closure of our factory uh, industry, uh, 5,000 jobs were lost, and indirectly it affected 25,000 people. So, and uh, the workers uh, they've been working for a long time. We have to let them go. So, I would like to say that uh, not all the allegations that are made that that were true on the industry. I have to take and I support Shamni because many of the people due to this less copper plant are uh, suffered and injured due to this. Police are fired the silver. So many innocent people are fired. Talking about the same, uh, <clears throat> I would like to first mention the four points uh, which I, I want to discuss with uh, you all. The first one is that was the fire unnecessary? The second one is were all the previous options that could be taken care of were performed or not? The second one is that why six of the protesters who were killed were shot from behind? Because this was the topic which was controversial and uh, it was asked that if the uh, riot was uh, carrying the weapons, then why they were shot from behind. The fourth point uh, is why no charge sheet was filed against the police officer. So uh, to address the first point, I would like to mention that on 17th April 2018, right after the uh, 15 to 20 days of the uh, event taking place, the, uh, the CBI released uh, CBI released a report on uh, which was published by Times of India, which said that uh, the CBI accused identified and unidentified persons with dishonest common intentions 
intentions of committing riots according to the source who has reviewed the document outlining the charges. The accused knew fully well that they are forming an unlawful assembly and prevented policemen from discharging duty. The comment was made by a CBI uh, in charge as it was mentioned in the document. The document also included that there were certain uh, sections which I want to mention, naming them the section 141, 146, 129, 130 and 131 CRPC which includes that it's not uh, which which uh, distinguishes between the civil force and armed forces which explains that uh, when the event took place and when the uh, public was or the uh, the riot was getting uh, in a other direction that at the time uh, the civil forces were called but since they saw that the uh, the number of uh, people that they are there, they are outnumbering the number of police officers present. So the extra force was called and along with this, when they found that uh, the, <clears throat> the riot is carrying uh, the weapons as well as something which is uh, which can't be uh, controlled by the uh, common police, that's where the armed forces were called and the Act Section 130 and 130 CRPC until the central government mentions the difference between the word civil force as against armed force means the use of force by the police. The use of armed force to disperse unlawful assemblies has been defined under these sections, which includes that if the force is, <coughs> if the force uh, is getting under the situation where they are, uh, they, they don't have uh, the other choice other than firing, then they are supposed to do that. Along with this, I do uh, want to mention that uh, another allegation that was uh, that was made that uh, there was no previous uh, previous warning uh, given by the police officers. But when the civil uh, civil force was present at the uh, industry, that at the same time the, uh, the warning was given, but there was no action taken by the uh, riot, and that's why the armed forces were called. And it's also a mis, uh, popular misconception that the police need an order from a magistrate in order to, in order to act. Section 129 CRPC speaks that any executive magistrate or officer in charge of a police station or in the absence of such officers in charge, any police officers not below the rank of a sub inspector can decide what action should be taken. And according to, uh, according to all these acts, the action was performed, and so there was no. Uh, Though no breakage of law that was uh, that took place uh, in the event. That's all. So initially, what is what is your side? You a bureaucrats. So you represent bureaucrats. Bureaucrats. Initially, the protest was uh, all about the environment. The, res the residents felt it and they started protesting. Then the pollution control board. Uh, the complaint was lodged in uh, TN PBC. So the initially the protest was all about environment then it turned to be a victim for, for the victims to justify that and the police actions and we have heard about the public opinion here by Saujanya and I want to ask to the political viewpoint to Nirasana. The order given by the was to take control of the protest it was getting out of hands. The order given by us, by the us was to take control of the protest, which was getting out of hands. We sympathized with the families of the victims, and the situation was anonymous. This question, the question is for everyone: the closed plant will start again or not? The recent news that come, came from Vedanta was in this year, before months. Like, will it restart or is it selling, selling to another bidder or for another production company? So the blame game will start again about who is responsible for the victims and uh, about the environment. But we'll be able to balance our country's economic development and its people health. We say health is wealth, but how much of this is practically possible? It's a joint effort between the people and the policy makers. It's an open end question to all. How will we achieve the balance? Thank you.